There we go. Well, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to a, another episode of the Creative Coffee Cafe. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> I'm sporting. Cheers. I'm sporting my new mug that I got for my sister for my birthday. Nice. <laughs> um, and today I'm I'm excited for every single Creative Coffee Cafe. Um, but today's is really exciting because oh yay, Tabitha's on. Hey, Tabs. Um, I just recently met Amy through an amazing group that I'm in, and she is an expert in something that I think we all want to learn more about, and we all want to um, better ourselves in, and that is learning how to speak the language of our clients. I know personally, sometimes I get so passionate about what I'm doing that I talk, and I'm sure it just goes, right? They, they don't want to know the techie talk. They just want to know how we can help them. So before we move on any further, thank you for joining us. My name is Brooke J. Spagrid. This is Amy. Amy. <laughs> am, I, am I saying the last name right? Because I always want to make everybody's last name sound French. <laughs> That's because that makes sense. Of course you would. No, it's Bernier. Yeah, Bernier. Okay, Bernier. Because when I had um, somebody else on, I was making it sound French too. So That's okay. Welcome upon, welcome upon the Creative Coffee Cafe. Let us know a little bit more about yourself. Sure, absolutely. My name is Amy Bernier, and I'm the founder and owner of Say Yes Coaching. Um, and right now, my focus is helping people rock their offers, get more clients, make more money, and serve more people. So I'm here to help people learn how to speak their lang speak their clients' language so that when they're sharing about an offer, when they're on a Facebook Live, when they're doing a Facebook post, a blog post, a website, you know, that you're always coming back to speaking, speaking the words and the language that your clients understand. Mm -hmm. and, um, a common problem that, that people have is that you're experts at what you do, right? You know all the jargon, you know all the all the vocabulary. In fact, you know it so well, you don't even realize that you're using it. <laughs> and you don't even realize that like, not everybody else uses it too. So when you are passionately sharing about that thing you do, yeah. um, you're accidentally, like you said earlier, just speaking over the head of your clients. So they're, they're reading what you're writing and they're looking to their left and looking to their right and saying, that must be for them, not for me. Right. So they don't know that you're actually speaking to them when you act when you are. Right. Yeah. So in your opinion, it's not always that the message is wrong. It's just a little bit tweaking of the language or the way we communicate it so that and and that's what your whole business is about is speaking in a way that by the time you get to having that conversation with somebody they know exactly who you are and how you help them that's why it's say yes right because they're just simply making the decision now of do i continue on or you know do i wait a little bit long wait a little bit because maybe the timing isn't right or whatever the plethora of <laughs> things going on in the background are right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, really a lot, a lot of the times, um, you know, you want your clients to say yes to you. And like you said, that there are a plethora of reasons why people aren't ready. Um, but you can get out of your own way by making sure, well, one thing that isn't standing in your way is how you're talking about what your, what your thing is, what your specialty is and making sure that, the people that you're intending to speak to, intending to reach, are the people in that are indeed hearing and listening to your message and going, yep, I know that's for me. Whether they say, yep, that's for me, and I want to do that right, right now, or whether they're saying, yep, that's for me, and you know, I, that I want to follow up on that later. Yeah. Either, either way, they're they're seeing themselves reflected in what you're writing, and they know, you know what that she's talking to me and I know that this product or this service is for me for sure. Right. And I've talked about this lots before because I feel like lots of people think that when they're sending their messages outward or they're marketing or advertising or whatever lingo you want to use, um, that everybody is their client and they're not right. We, we need, we each need to figure out who our ideal client is and talk specifically to them. Um, yes. make a smaller audience, but you'll have better, um, relationships with those that are meant to actually work with you because whatever you have s things in common or similarities or similar ideals. So 
Um, I'm getting excited to get uh, talking about your process because you do have a little bit of a process and we're actually going to sure. go through that today, which I'm super pumped that you're willing to share with everybody. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. No problem. Um, oh, so go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say before we get going, if you're here live or watching the replay, it doesn't matter. I want you to put in the comments, hey, I'm here live sitting at the table with you or watching the replay. Um, yeah. So the whole idea of this Creative Coffee Cafe is that I bring cool people like Amy in, and I want everybody to feel like they're sitting in a restaurant with us having coffee, even though you're at home or wherever you are on your phone, maybe. Um, so be a part of the conversation. Don't be the creeper at the table next to us that's just eavesdropping and listening. <laughs> Let us know you're here. Say hi. Um, give us some thumbs up and hearts and things like that when you hear things that, uh, that you're enjoying. And that you're like, yeah, this this is exactly what I wanted to hear today or whatever. We need your feedback. So make sure you say hi. I see we have we have live viewers today. So make sure um, that you're popping in to say hi. Absolutely. And the really great opportunity that we have now is that if you have any questions about what I'm talking about, um, it helps me to be able to speak to your circumstances in particular when you ask questions. Mm -hmm. So if you... You know, if I say something that you agree with and you're like, yay, I already do that. That's great. That's that lets us know that lets me know that you are on the right track and that you're understanding what I'm saying. And yeah. so if you ask questions when you have them, that helps me to speak to to you. So give us some feedback and let us know what you think. If you have questions or you're like, yes, I agree or no, I disagree. Like all of those things are totally welcome. And yeah, we don't want it. We don't want creepers. We want people that want to have a conversation with us. Well, I am a little bit known for being like, I love playing devil's advocate. I call it like when I'm having a conversation, even with my husband, I like to be that person that's like, well, what if this or what if that? So feel free to do that. This is a safe place to do that. Um, that's what this is all about. So uh, welcome to Chris and Tabitha and Melanie. We've got some people on listening in the background. So that's awesome. Awesome. We're happy that you're here and we're here to there. There we <laughs> we adore you too. Um, and we're really here to um, tailor this to your questions and what you need to know. So bop in and chime in whenever you want to. And same for you, Brooke, and feel free to interrupt me and say, you know, uh, <laughs> could you explain that further or uh, could you elaborate on that or, you know, uh, anytime. Because yeah, sometimes, so I, sometimes I, I can go on a roll and then, you know, people are like, well, I didn't know when my time was to talk. And I'm like, oh, please just interrupt me because I get excited <laughs> and then I just go and I forget to pause sometimes. So yeah. force me to pause if I need to force. And I'm the same pause. way. And I tell people that if I get excited about something or an idea or a question, like I have to be like and send it out your way. Otherwise, I forget. Yeah. So, Actually, I think that we were talking about this when we had our pre-interview, that we're the same in this way. So that's good. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember if it was you that I was talking about that with or if it was somebody else. But yeah, yeah it we was want me. more conversations, less creepers. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> that's for... right. That's right. Awesome. So <laughs> Don't be a coffee cafe creeper. <laughs> that's right. you, anyway. now have a, you now have a new tagline, an yeah. unexpected tagline. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. So because sure. we all want to learn more about how to um, speak our client's language so that mm -hmm. they understand exactly how we can help them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's start with where do we start? <laughs> well, I'll give you guys a little bit of background on me first. Like what makes me, you know, what makes me qualified to do this and what is my experience? Now, I've been a teacher off and on for the past 15 years, and I've had the opportunity to teach community community college, middle school, fifth grade science, sixth grade social studies, seventh grade reading, um, and fourth grade math and first grade. So I've moved from place to place. So what happens when I've moved a couple of times is that you have to kind of start over and prove yourself and do a lot of substitute teaching. So really, those have been like my full time jobs, but I've actually taught, uh, you know, kindergarten all the way through college, uh, through substitute teaching and, you know, long term teaching, like all this stuff. So what I found was that every time you go into a new 
classroom um, or a new grade or a new subject, like one of the very first things you have to do is, is to, to look around and kind of figure out what's the culture of this place? What are the words that they use? You know, different teachers have different um, ways of managing their classrooms and different ways of communicating with their students and different subjects, you know, um, unfold in different ways. So there's all these different ways that we communicate that are kind of um, within a classroom. What I found was over time, I became an expert at kind of going into new situations and figuring yeah. out kind of the language and the culture of that group of people, whether it's, you know, a classroom or whether it's like a new, you know, well, like you a new have, hobby. You have to come in and do a really quick assessment of where everybody's at mm -hmm. and, and how to speak to them to catch their attention or whatever, right? Like, you, I think you had even mentioned, totally. not necessarily come in and set your dominance, but you know, like there were some students when you're teaching the older ones, like they're looking at you like, really, you're my teacher, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So you oh, have yeah. to establish that you are, I guess, the leader. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And so I became an expert at kind of going into new situations and establishing myself as the leader, but also being able to effectively communicate with, with people. So what I found was, Lacey says, reading the room is a skill that isn't as common as it should be. Absolutely. And it's something that, you know, you I did it out of necessity. Like if I hadn't done that, like I probably would have been eaten alive every day as I was going from school to school, from grade to grade, from subject to subject. Like I would have been miserable. I never and would have been able to. gone home feeling defeated, right? Oh yeah, totally, totally. And why, while it is exhausting, at the same time, um, what I learned from this, from this changing and changing and changing and changing is that picking up on the details and really taking in um taking in how each place works and how it operates is something that is kind of in my zone of genius. So when I realized that I had this skill that could then help people um, really connect with their clients, I was like, oh my gosh, I've actually been doing this, unknowingly been doing this for most of my life. Um, yeah. And so that paired with being a teacher and my, my, the way that I work is that I automatically, you know, when I learn new concepts, I try to break them down into their most simplest parts. At, at this point, you know, I've accidentally been practicing to teach just about everything <laughs> that I've been learning, just in how I've learned how to approach things. So what I well, found is, go ahead. Not to interrupt you, but don't they say that to, in order for you to like truly understand something, you have to try and teach it to somebody else? Yeah. Right. Because yes. I sometimes think I know how to do stuff and I, I do. I'll sit down and I go through the motions and I do it. But not until you actually have to sit and show somebody else how to do it. Are you like, holy man, like I got to figure out how to take what's up here <laughs> and share it with them in a way that they understand. So yeah. we do this in our everyday lives with just about everything we do. Yeah. Right. And you know, with children, try to explain to them how to do something. Totally right. And so I don't have children, but I had have had students for, you know, multiple years over and over and over again. But what I found is there, the learning process is one of, you know, taking in information and then copying what your teacher did. And then, you know, taking in more information and doing part of it on your own and then asking the teacher questions. And then it's this slow, this gradual release of independence. And then when you finally do something on your own, you're at first, you're always thinking back, what did my, what were the, te what were the steps that my teacher told me? What were the steps that my teacher told me? And going back to that frame of reference from your teacher, but you, you know that you're, you fully absorb something and fully understand something when you can, in your own words, explain a concept of something that you learned to somebody else. Like I used to have my students teach what they knew to another student. And that was kind of like their final assessment. Did you understand? Did the person that you were teaching understand? Mm -hmm. So all wrapped up together, all these skill sets wrapped up together. I found I've, I've landed in this spot where I'm teaching people how to rock their offers. And I'm realizing like, I've actually been doing this my, you know, for a really long time and it's, it's working. It's fantastic. And it, for many people, it's really the missing link. When you have your ideal client avatar, when you have the, the product or service that you know solves a problem for that group of people and you post about, 
you know, what you're doing, let's say on social media and you're, you know, you're trying it, you're working it. You're like, I got this. This is compelling. This is interesting. And it's like exactly <laughs> what they need. And then you post it and you're like, yes, 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 yes. And then you hear crickets. <laughs> and then you're sitting and you're waiting. You're waiting for the likes. You're waiting for the love. You're waiting for like the comments and the acknowledgement. Like, thank you. This is exactly what I need. And yeah. nothing happens. Yeah. And I think so often, you know, well, I think we this, can all relate to that. Well, right. And we, and what happens in like our brain goes to thinking, you know, if it happens enough times, our brain goes to thinking like, maybe I'm in the wrong field. Like maybe I don't know what I'm doing. And you start really questioning what you're doing and, and what, what you love to do when mm -hmm. it really is, there's a disconnect. Like somebody isn't seeing themselves in their offer. They don't realize that, they, that you're talking to them. And upon that realization, you can take off all the responsibility off of your shoulders of saying, you know, do I really suck at this? Like, do they not really want to work with me? And taking like that really like <laughs> that personal element out of it, because so often it's like something small that we've just taken for granted. We didn't even realize we were doing it in the first place. And once we shift a couple of things, the response is totally different, which right. is actually what has been happening with my clients. So I'm really excited to teach you guys what I'm going to teach you today. We're also personally invested with what we're saying, especially if you're a solo printer where you are your business, right? When you're crafting a post or putting something together, we're so, in, it's hard sometimes for us to remove ourselves so oh, yeah. that we're not actually speaking to ourselves. We're speaking to the people we want to help. So, um, hey, Mike, so glad that you could join us today. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're a couple hours behind today just to accommodate other schedules here. So glad you could join us. But, um, oh, Amy, you're freezing up on your end a little bit there. Oh, okay. I don't know. Is everybody else seeing that too? I'm not sure if maybe it was just showing up on my screen, but you're kind of frozen. Am I, second. am I still frozen? No, I can see. Okay, okay awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, so what, would you like me to, yes, to let's go start. through? So. So what's a, what's quite often the missing link? Because we did talk about one keyword that you kept saying to me it tends to be the missing link, or at least the foundation for how we can fix this. Mm -hmm. uh, Is that we're at this point? Oftentimes, what we're what oftentimes what we're teaching is um, something that we struggled with at one point. So. You know, I think that there's a phrase that said oftentimes your ideal client is you a couple years back or you at a slightly different stage than you are now. So, you know, more now than you did then. And in fact, there's been a transformation between where you were then to now. You know, you're using different words. You have different strategies for, you know, doing the thing that you do. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes because we used to be the person that we're helping, we can like spot them from a mile away. We can see that they need our thing. We can see that they need our help because we, we, we connect with that person, that older version of ourselves or that previous version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we're like, Oh, there's a person I can help. I know it. I know it. I know it. But this is the thing is while we can see it so clearly, we forget because we see them so clearly, we forget that the words that we use now to describe that person are totally different than the words that that person describes to describe their own situation now. So let me rephrase that because that was kind of confusing. We can see them very, very clearly because they used to be a ver they're a former version of us. Right. But how we described our situation when we were in their shoes is totally different than how we, as someone who has learned and grown and gained more knowledge, we describe ourselves totally different. But because we see them so clearly as this like future version of ourselves, we think, oh, we know exactly what we need to say. We, we know exactly, but you actually don't. So the disconnect is that you are no longer that person and you have grown from that place. So mm -hmm. while you can see them, you aren't using the same words to describe the scenario that you would when you were in it. Okay. So when we were chatting, um, I wrote down that you felt like the key to all of this is listening, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all about listening and collecting information so that you know how to communicate to, I guess, our former versions of ourselves. <laughs> yes. Think of it that way, right? So, mm -hmm. so how do we start doing that? Because 
we all think we're good listeners, <laughs> but what sort of things do we need to be asking or listening for, I guess? Okay. Yeah. So part of being a good listener is asking really good questions. And that's something that I focus on with my clients. So the questions that you're gonna ask are, okay, so what an offer is, is if you're painting a picture of where your clients are now and you're painting a picture to, to um, where they wanna be. And when I say where they are now and where they wanna be, I'm talking emotions. I'm talking what they've tried. I'm talking what they're frustrated with, how they're feeling right now, what they've tried and, and not succeeded at, and what they've, where they wanna be, where they hope to be, what do they want to be doing, and how do they want to feel. Um, oftentimes when we go to put our offers out there and we don't know this, we say, we've got this great coaching program and it's four weeks long and there's four group coaching calls and there's this private Facebook group and, right. and, we're, listing and, all the, and we're listing all the features, right? Mm -hmm. We're listing all the features. And so we're telling them about all of the parts that we're going to offer them. But really when it comes down to it, the, the only reason anyone buys anything is because they feel like they're going to feel better after they purchased it, purchased it. Right. So the very first step you want is to really understand where they're at right now, how they're feeling and what they've tried and what they're frustrated at. And so what I tell my clients is we're really focused on before questions and after questions. So a place to start if you're an established business person right now and you have clients that you've worked with. Mm -hmm. is you want to go back to those clients that you've helped and you're going to say, you know what, I'm developing this amazing service or product and I would really love your feedback on your experience with working with me. Right. Now, in my experience, you've helped someone with something and when you ask them if you if for feedback in order to make a program even better in 99.9% .9 of the cases, people want to help you. You've helped them, and yes, they've paid you money, but if you've done a really good job and really helped them transform, whether in their business or, or personally, they're, they're happy to be given an avenue by which they can say thank you to you. Right. So by giving you feedback. It's all right? You totally. help me, I help you, yeah. Totally, absolutely. And people want to help other people. That's basically how it is. Um, and in my ex personal experience and in my experience with clients, there had the only reason any cl former client has had said no is because they needed to meet at a different time. It was because they were super busy and they just couldn't speak at that moment or email right back at that moment. It was never a no. It was always a really how about, about later. Mm -hmm. yeah. Totally. Awesome. So the questions that you're going to ask are, how did you feel before we worked together? That's question number one. Question number two is, what did you try and it didn't work? That's question number two. Question mm -hmm. number three is, what were you frustrated and challenged by? Now, these are open-ended questions for a reason, because you don't want to ask questions that lead a person to think, what does she want to hear? Mm -hmm. What is the right answer? Um, and you don't want like a one sentence answer. So keeping these questions open and um, kind of general like that allows your former client the space to describe like all of what was going on with them before they started working with you. And it's really getting that full picture that's going to help you rock your offer. You're going to write all this down. You're going to ask to either record the conversation or ask them to write in detail uh, answers in an email or take notes while they're talking. I prefer not to take notes while people are talking because I find that part of being a good listener is giving your full attention to the person. So, so is this something that you would recommend we, well, you said this is something we would do with clients we've already helped mm -hmm. to help start to pull some of this language out yes. of those that we've already helped that are our ideal mm -hmm. clients, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing a follow-up feedback form too using like Google Docs, mm -hmm. something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So you could put these into something like that or like Survey Monkey or anything you want, some something where you can collect that data too. Yeah, totally. You can do a survey. Um, you could do a questionnaire. This is actually for people that don't just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Um, so the way I'm approaching it right now is 
giving suggestions based upon you not having done this before, like you not having had a system of asking questions like this before. So if it's new and you've never done that before, I want you to go back to former clients. Now, if you do have something in place, what I want you to do is go back to the data that you've already collected from people um, and see is that you know is this information about how they felt before is this information about what they tried before they worked with me now if you don't have that i would say that part of working with me is helping also to develop a system where you ask these questions as you're working together so you never ever have to go back all again and again and again to clients it's actually once you do this once with the, your clients and you gather all that information when you take that and then you rock your offer, as you magnetize and attract new clients, you can implement this new system of saying, you know, asking that question before you work together, you know, what have you tried? How do you feel? Um, Almost often, like a pre-qualifying. It right? definitely is. And um, what I find is that when people get to know you a little bit better and really know who you are, they're really more willing to open up um, and really share kind of like their frustrations and their the things that, that are ups, have upset them. Um, so having it be on a pre-qualifying questionnaire is fantastic. And I would also recommend following up, you know, further into the relationship as well when someone might be more comfortable with sharing the details with you. Right. Um, and maybe once they've seen or felt some sort of a shift or transformation or you've gotten them some sort of results too, because it might be easier for them to be like, well, this is where I was then. And this is where I am now. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In order for yeah. To Sometimes it's just, it's just important to, um, to know that when you're asking questions of people, that it's not just like, you know, as you're asking questions, you're actually also need to be developing. I mean, this is why you're going back to people that you've already worked with because you already have no like and, and trust established. Mm -hmm. So they've already created a safe container by which they can communicate with you um, their vulnerabilities. Now, if you don't have that already established, it's really, really important to, you know, create a, a dynamic between yourself and the person. So if when they are sharing somewhat vulnerable things with you, um, that it's a safe place for them to do so. So it's me just acknowledging that, you know, it's up to us as the question asker to not just bombard somebody with questions, but also provide an atmosphere by which they can give you answers in, in a way that feels safe for them. Right. Right. And then we use, and we're not doing it in a way that's like, <clears throat> I don't want people to get confused and I don't think they will with the way we're going about this, but we're not prodding people for information to kind of use it to convince more people about that what we do and what we have is what they need. Like it's not, it's not for what's, I'm trying to find the word right now. It's not for like you're it's this isn't a process of manipulation. Right. There we this go. This is really rocking your offers isn't like, you know, convince everybody that you have the right thing and that they need to buy it right now. That's not what this is at all. Yeah. This is sharing about what you do in a way that the people it's intended for see themselves reflected back in your offer and they say yes to you because because they're connecting with what you're writing not because you're strong arming them or twisting their arm and saying like, you better get this or you're going to be ugly or fat or unsuccessful or broke or, right. you know, be lonely and sad, like for the rest of your <laughs> life. Like, like we're not going to press anybody's buttons in that way. But we, what we will do is paint in a very accurate picture of how people are feeling right now with the purpose that, when the right, when you're perfect for you client reads that, they go, oh my gosh, how did they know? How did they know that about me? And that, and how do they know that about me? And how do they know that about how I am feeling right now? Or and even how, just, this person gets it. This is exactly where I'm at, right? Totally. It's actually um, forming a connection, a bond with someone um, where they feel seen and heard before you actually have a conversation, which is a really, really powerful thing in the world where, in a world where oftentimes people aren't feeling heard and seen. So if you can provide that for them at every step of your communication process, you're, you're more likely to have someone say yes to you. Yeah. Yeah, this whole world. I mean, <clears throat> if we, if we weren't such a digital world, we weren't be, we wouldn't be doing cool stuff like this mm -hmm. and sitting and having coffee with 
you know, I know, right? People, right. It's so awesome. But there is an element of this too, that um, sometimes you can feel really connected with people and sometimes you can feel really lonely too, right? It's kind of a, a false facade of having tons of people and then feeling lonely too. So I've always said it's, we don't, or we do want to work with humans. We're, we're kind of done with this whole like super automated, like whatever. Um, and of course, in our businesses, we do have to automate certain things. It's just, you know, the way we we're sometimes we're just one person, but it doesn't have to be automated and feel automated. It can still feel very personal, very, um, you know, caring and empathetic and whatever mm -hmm. choosing the right words and starting to build that relationship so mm -hmm. when you do start to speak with them one-on-one the voice oh, yeah. everything is consistent with who you are and what you do right like oh yeah totally i mean um you know to sides not sidestep but to you know be on a tangent just for a minute i would say that you know if you're showing up as your yourself you know as your perfectly imperfect self um, on your Facebook page and your social media. Um, <laughs> if you're showing up consistently as, you know, someone that's passionate about what they do and, you know, that is felt, that is felt. Those aren't the, the things on social media that people feel, um, repelled by or feel lonely from. Those are actually the kinds of interactions that draw people in because mm -hmm. you're, you're secure and confident enough to share what you do, share what you're passionate about. And, you know, not, I, I definitely feel that, you know, projecting a sense of I've got it all together and I'm perfect actually isn't the way to connect with yes. people. You know, mm -hmm. when I see a perfectly, you know, Photoshopped picture of a person that actually doesn't make me feel like, oh, they're just like me. That actually <laughs> makes me feel like, oh, they're not like me. <laughs> So yeah. if you can show up and be yourself, and sometimes that's hard because sometimes, you know, we're, we don't have it all together and you know what, that's okay. And we can still be not having it together a hundred percent of the time and still show up as ourselves and still help people and help them move forward in their business or their personal life or whatever. So yeah. one is not a block to the other. In fact, I feel like it's been miscommunicated for so, so long that actually the imperfection, the vulnerability, the uncertainty is actually where the connection is. When yeah. people can look at you and say, me too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you've made a new friend or you've, you've raised someone, piqued someone's interest. You're, you're, you're drawing people in that way. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it, you so much more relatable. Um, I like to call it the H factor and it's just the human factor, right? Yeah. We, at the end of the day, we really all just want to connect with people, whether it's to help them or be helped or whatever, right? We Social media allows us to connect with so many people. Like, like how in the world would I have ever connected with you who, you know, is now living in Denver and whatever else without the power of social media? Um, but we, totally. all, we all want to, like, feel at the end of the day like we know these people and that. Totally. Yeah. I don't know. That's it's some it's a human need. Totally. Totally. And we can't forget that when it comes to branding ourselves and marketing our businesses either, that people want to work with people. Yeah. And it's okay to screw up. Like Yeah. That's, that makes you more approachable because you've just humanized your business. Totally. And our brains like want to tell us that like we're weak and we're we're um you know, they're all going to laugh at it. Like our inner middle schooler just rages, you know, like if we make a mistake, like is my hair, they're my hair, my face, like, are they going to yeah. laugh at me? Are they going to think I'm stupid? Like, are they going to think like I look dumb? Like, are they going to understand what I'm saying? Like so, those kinds of things, you know, those concerns are concerns that everybody has. And I think that when you start to really see that people, um, that that's not true, that they're not all going to laugh at you. And if they do laugh at you, they're not your person. Like they're not your people. Um, and that your, your people are waiting. And this is something I tell my clients often because sometimes like the offer is the only thing. It's like the last piece that is keeping them from showing up and being totally, totally visible with their business and putting themselves out there. 
your people are out there and they're waiting for you to stand up and talk about the thing that you're awesome at and that you love. Like I believe that you're doing your people a disservice by staying quiet, by staying small, by not showing up even as your, you know, imperfect self. Like those are the people that your people will fall in love with. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if you're holding yourself back because you're worried about what everybody else is going to think, um, when you're at your days, like your lifetime's end or your day's end or however you want to look at it, like you're going to be laying there going, I wish I would have done that. Or I wish I could have done more or whatever. Right. But nobody's ever like, oh, man, I really wish I didn't put myself out there. Right. I feel like every time you push yourself out there and you do something, whether you succeed or you fail, um, there's always like a big lesson to be learned. And you come out of the other end so much better. And I think you're better able to help people once you've done that like totally if we haven't if we hadn't gone through stuff that was challenging we'd actually have nothing to teach right yeah it would be awfully boring <laughs> totally totally boring and yeah, so that's people listening to this um or relating to this at, at all and i haven't seen any comments for the last little while so like chime in if if this is if this all makes sense to you or, you know, feel free to share your stories. We'd love to bring them up and be a part of the conversation. Don't be the yeah. creeper. <laughs> Don't be the creeper. Um, no creepers in this, in this chat. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm curious. Like, do you feel like, you know, rocking your offer and really getting yourself out there is something that's keeping you from really stepping into your power and stepping into being visible? Like, is that something that that uncertainty and that not knowing how to move forward, is that keeping you? Is that holding you back? Like, is that keeping you from like saying, hey, everybody, this is the thing I do. And I'm over here and I can help you. You know, is that something oh. that you've noticed? I'm curious. At least we got you pa You got paused for a second with your hand up here. Oh, I did? It seems like every time you ever get a person ever gets paused, it's always like in the most awkward position. <laughs> yeah. This one wasn't so bad. <laughs> I mean, I can just make faces and we, I can just pretend to freeze. Right. <laughs> Let's see if anybody notices. Maybe they're not paying attention. We can okay, just so pretend freeze. So the next step, you, so you've gone to your former clients and you've asked them, you know, how did you feel before we worked together? What have you tried and what hasn't worked? What has been frustrating and challenging? So that's the before portion um, okay. where people will look at what you write in your offer and they'll go, that's totally me right now. Then you ask your, your clients, you know, how did you feel after we worked together? What did you find supportive and helpful? And how did you feel more ease after we worked together? Mm -hmm. um, and then you're getting that, getting them to paint a picture of how, what their, basically how their life changed, how their feelings changed after working with you. Right. Because if you've told them you're going to help them with something, it should become easier for them at the end if you've done your job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also if they have any quantitative results. So we really like to focus on emotions and actions that are different after. However, in some cases in, there's a something that can be measured like, oh, I got like eight more clients in a week or, you know, it's not always just like I felt so much more confident and strong. But depending upon what industry you're in, those kind of after questions might have a quantitative um, something measurable to to notice as well. So if that's the case, then you're you'll add a before and after question about, you know, that that measurement, um, like if it's zero clients to eight clients or if it's like two clients to 10, something like right. that. Or if it's like, I can't lose weight to losing 20 pounds or something like that. That can also be that, you know, added question as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've asked before questions. We've asked some after questions. Yep. Now, how do we translate this <laughs> into a way that, um, I guess, helps us connect with the people that we're meant to connect with? Okay. So the next step is actually to analyze the data. And that is actually something like people hear the, where some people get super excited when they hear the phrase analyze the data and other people are like, no, this is not what I like to do. Now, this isn't, this is kind of a middle of the road thing. So you're going to create a chart or you're going to pull up a document and you're going to take all of the answers for the before questions and 
and dump them in, docu in a document or in like a spreadsheet. Then you're going to go through and what you're looking for are wor the words that are used over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Okay. Okay. And then you're going to look for common shared experiences that are mentioned over and over and over and over and over again for before. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to do the same thing for the after. You're going to dump the data in a document or dump it in a chart. And then you're going to look for what this, the words that are the common words that are used over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And the common shared experiences that are talked about over and over and over again. And, so basically the things we're looking for are uh, describing words of their emotion and their, right? Because that's what we've been mm -hmm. asking them is to describe mm -hmm. more of their feelings, right? Mm hmm emotions and actions that were taken based around those feelings. Yeah. Um, and what you'll notice, what you'll start to notice is that there's a pattern and there's probably like top, top uh, there'll be like two or three topics that are like really, really up there that keep coming up over and over and over again. And then yeah. there'll be some that are mentioned here and there, you know, and if you can go for at least 10 clients that you talk to, that is a great 10 or more. If you uh, can get that, that number in order for you to have like a, a really broad spectrum of feedback, you know, it'll, the data will look different if it's only two people. So you can't be as certain that this is an issue for more people, but if you have 10 or more, then you can really start like, you know, being more confident that yes, this is something that's clearly happening over and over and over again. So it's, ask before questions, ask the after questions, take down all the data you can, all the details you can, and then you're going to organize it and notice the common words and the common experiences that people are having over and over again. Yeah. Who's excited about analyzing data now? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so I just went over, I just had a client meeting before our call. Um, and what we found was because it's, I'm, I work, I collaborate with everybody. Like you don't give me your stuff and then I go do it for you. That the teacher in me is like, no, no, you are going to understand how to do this. Like you will I be do empowered. It. You will be empowered by this. You will feel confident. Like if I do it for you, then none of that happens. Like that's what goes on in my brain. And therefore doing that stuff by myself is absolutely no fun. So part of working with me is working with me, collaborating with me and and what we noticed today was that it was like almost palpable as we were reading the responses that people were writing about their before experiences, like the emotion was like, was overwhelming. You know, it was just like, gosh, people are really feeling this. And so you want to take that feeling with the words that, that, that are triggering these emotions and you want to, um, this process will help you translate that feeling of in this particular case was people were feeling overworked and overwhelmed. And it was just, you know, showing up and, you know, being overweight and having depression and having anxiety. So all of these things were really painting a picture of someone that was really unhappy, but the words that they used to describe it were overwhelmed, overworked, depressed, lonely, and it came up over and over and over again. So you really got a sense of people are really struggling with this. They really, they really need this solution. So it's very important that you, you know, you approach it this way because having them see themselves in your writing, in your offer is, mm -hmm. and, and, and letting them know that you have that solution. It's helping somebody. It's really, really helping someone that's feeling stuck. So it's what you do is needed. Hmm? Yeah. It's allowing you to be empathetic to them in a way that's totally. not undermining them or, or, could, or adding any more overwhelm. Right. It's, it's, yeah. It's making sure that you are proving that you are at the same level as them in the understanding and that you can take them from here to here or totally. wherever. No. Totally. Totally. Um, I just want to interject because Lacey was on here. I didn't see it right away, but she said she'd love to see some sample onboarding questionnaires or something. Maybe if we could. Sure. I actually have a lead magnet that I um, am just finishing up in the next couple of days. And it's really walking you through this entire process and giving you examples of what it looks like. So it's mm -hmm. not just telling you what it is. It's also showing you through examples. So if you want, um, you can write in the comments, whether you on the replay or whether you're, 
um, live, um, if you write the phrase, I want to rock my offer down in the comments, I'll be sure to make sure that you get that lead magnet the moment that it comes out because it'll really clarify and solidify what I'm talking about because you'll have something right in front of you to see and look at and go over. Does that sound I'll, good? I'll hold you accountable to that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'll, I'll make sure that you guys get it. <laughs> no problem. Awesome. Um, awesome. And so the very last step is actually writing your offer. You know, you've, you've asked the before questions, you've asked the after questions, you've taken mm -hmm. down the data for both before and after, you've written down all the words and all the common shared experiences, and you've noticed what, what are the top three or four for each. Now, writing the offer, there's a bit of science and there's a bit of art and there's a bit of magic in all of it. And mm -hmm. what it comes down to is you want to show people that you understand where, where they are right now. And oftentimes in the way that I teach people to write offers, it comes in the form of questions. So the first part of your offer is going to be question based. And the second part is really going to be describing because the questions are getting people to see where they're at right now. So often that we, we go through on autopilot and we stopping and reflecting maybe doesn't happen that often, but when an offer kind of asks us a question, we automatically, as we're reading it, we ask ourselves that question and our clients will say yes to the question. And as they're reading the questions and saying, yes, that's me, yes, that's me, yes, that that's me, you'll notice that there's a momentum that builds. And they're like, oh my gosh, yup, 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 uh, I gotta keep, yup, yup. And they read and read and read. And they're saying yes to things that they're not super comfortable with, things that they're not, you know, happy about. But then there comes kind of a turning point in the offer where we say, well, imagine if these things weren't the case. And then you describe a picture, you describe, you know, you paint a picture of what it, what your life can be like if you had all of these things um, worked on. So I'll give you an example. One of my most recent clients has done a food and body program. So what we, the data that we collected was, you know, okay, so people that feel out of control around eating, that's a lot of people. Um, and a lot of people call it different things. So we did surveys because her, um, because her topic was so common, like people have problems with eating like everywhere. You, you can't be in a household with somebody that doesn't have an, an interesting perspective on eating or rules Everybody that they have to follow or mm -hmm. whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So we did a survey on top of her going back to former clients. And so a lot of the data that we found um, was people would say they didn't want to look at themselves in the mirror. They would avert their eyes when looking in the mirror. They would wear loose clothing. Every time they would put on their clothing, they would notice it feeling tight and then have really judgmental thoughts about themselves about that. You know, they would have rules around, you know, what they would eat, what they were allowed to eat, what they weren't allowed to eat. And then if they ate something that they weren't allowed to eat, they would like basically punish themselves about it. Yeah. So these kinds of things came up over and over and over again, and they were all in the words of the clients. And her clients, after they worked with her, they felt like food wasn't food wasn't the thing that like they thought about all day. They could put on their clothes and not have negative thoughts. They could look at themselves in the mirror and you know think, "I love you. I love the way that you look." You know, like there was a huge transformation from one from the before to the after. So. Mm -hmm. What we did was we asked questions like, do you look in the mirror or do you avert your eyes when you look in the mirror? You know, when you pull on your pants in the morning, do you think, oh, my God, like if only I lost if I, I it, my life would be so much better if only I lost 10 pounds. And so all these questions are things that people had said in their feedback. And then we said, imagine if it imagine if, you know, none of this was the case. And then we painted the picture using the the actual true after statements that her clients gave about basically how they felt worthy and loving and you know food and weight wasn't like driving them crazy anymore yeah. and then at the end you know we said you know she said and I have a program that helps you get from this place to this place message me if you're interested she fills her program in like four days right you know because of taking that time on the back end and really understanding where your clients are coming from, how they're feeling, what they tried, and then, you know, 
how they felt after, how much better they felt. Like well, everybody and, wants to feel better. <laughs> I can't help but think that a lot of times in business, um, we're always trying to put together products or services right that we can that we can sell that we can help somebody with mm -hmm. and we get so in our own space that we forget about this other stuff right mm -hmm. and, and i know that i've in the past even sent out questions or whatever been like asking for feedback or whatever but the feedback we're getting from the people that we're working with may actually not always point you in the direction that you thought you were going to go does that does that make sense to you like you totally. might think you need to do this thing. But after you've worked with people, even though you've given them transformations and they're saying, this is how it's helped me, perhaps you need to pivot <laughs> sort of what you're offering to. Um, it's not well, always it's, what we want to offer. It's what they need. <laughs> true. It's totally true. And sometimes like as the expert, like, so I'll give you the example with my client that did the food and body program. Like, all of the food and body issues, all the different ways that it was described, all comes down to worthiness. Do you feel that you're worthy? It well, all it comes down even, to that. It never had anything to do with food. Food was no. the thing that they focused on and pointed at and said, that's my issue. Correct. Yeah. So if she had written an offer that was all about worthiness, do you feel worthy? Do you, you know, do you feel worthy of love? Do you feel worthy of receiving? Do you feel that? All of those people that were having the struggles with the food and body never would have seen themselves reflected in that offer. And she would have been saying, I know I can help people. Like, I know I have the thing that can help them. But the only thing that the disconnect was the words that she was using. So oftentimes what worthiness looks like in our life or what the result of someone's coaching or you know service looks like in somebody's life actually looks it's described differently than how we the expert would describe it which is yeah. why going to them and getting their words is so so important yeah i can see many businesses doing this not even just in like a coaching environment but even like a a services environment like you know mm -hmm. i don't know plumbers and electricians and things like that that you know, yeah. that sort of stuff, stuff like those businesses don't have a ton of emotion, right? Like um, as far, I guess, as far as much as like a, a health and wellness transformation would have, but, but people have an issue and they struggle with it. And then you come in and you fix it. And if you could, yeah, if you can find the right words to, to describe that, I could see even service-based industries. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. Because who, who do you call when like the power is out or your, or your toilet is clogged, like plumbers and electricians and people that fix things around your house that we totally take for granted. It's totally an emotion. Don't tell me it's not an emotional experience friends when your toilet won't flush and it's filled with like, you know what I mean? You know, that is an yeah. emotional experience and you want to feel better. So, so we've been doing some renovations at the house here lately. <laughs> oh Yeah. Uh, so I went two weeks without a kitchen sink because I was redoing my counters and everything. So don't tell me that trying to cook and feed a family um, doesn't emotionally affect you when every time you're done with a dish or need to rinse your hands off, you got to go to the bathroom and use the bathtub <laughs> and yeah. then go back to the kitchen and continue. like it's it's a stressor. Yeah. So yeah. Um, like in that case, yeah, like a plumber wouldn't be like you know. Um, are you angry because your sink doesn't work or whatever? Like you would want to tap into more of the emotional side and be like, you know, totally. And, and the thing is, you don't have to make it up. We don't have to guess, go back and talk to your people. They'll tell you everything you need to know. And I think that to it, this can also speak to relationships being so important to our, to all of our businesses, because when you have good relationships and with people and you really do get to know them, they have no problem telling you all the answers that you want to know. And it really takes good listening, you know, really hearing and seeing where people are. Like somebody could tell me like all the things that are wrong with their business and I could disagree. But if I'm listening, there's a connection there. Like you don't have to agree with something that with all the things that a person says in order to develop a relationship and allow mm -hmm. them to be heated, seen and heard. Um, and those are some foundational pieces that allow you to rock your offer 
because you're then transferring, you know, that dynamic to your offer where you're, you're showing somebody that they're heard and seen by showing, I get where you are right now and I get where you want to be. And Hey, like I have this, I have this thing that can help you that way. You're just talking about the thing that you do and sharing, you know, who it's for and being very clear on, I know where you're at right now and I Mm -hmm. know how you want to feel and that people then feel like, like that's the person to talk to because she understands me even before you have a conversation. It's a very, very powerful tool. And the fact of the matter is like, yes, you're learning how to speak your client's language in order to rock your offer and attract more clients and make more money and serve more people and, you know, get out there because what you do is important and you know, it can help people change people's businesses, change people's lives. Like it's really important and powerful that you do the thing that you're meant to do. Right. Um, And this strategy of learning your client's language isn't just for offers. You can use the same process for having sales conversations uh, about choosing like what to talk about on your Facebook posts, what to talk about in your Facebook Mm -hmm. blog or not Facebook blog, your blog posts, your websites, your sales pages. It all comes down to knowing your client's language. And you know what? You can have all these pieces, not know their language and be so uncertain as to why things aren't working like you can have all the pieces but if you don't have a language you have nothing yeah i can see this just being something that when you meet somebody like you know at a kid's sporting event or something and you're sitting beside somebody even just maybe knowing what kind of questions to ask them like oh what do you like you know what do you do and like that kind of like pulling out the right things then you can have a a great conversation with them without feeling like it's that awkward chit chat small talk because you're connecting with them on a different, lo- like a different way, right? Totally. I mean, asking questions really allows you to connect with people. So if we want to just push all the business stuff aside and you just want to have great relationships with people and you want to, you know, start a conversation with somebody at your kid's soccer game or in the coffee shop, like really just know that like asking open-ended questions, how is your day? Like, what are you interested in? Things like that, that give people the space to respond as themselves. And you just be quiet and listen and be a good listener and give good eye contact, nod your head and find, I, I find that the best strategy to be the, like the ultimate, you know, great listener is pretend that the person that you're speaking to is the most interesting person in the world. Hmm. If you can have genuine curiosity in other people at all times, you will have, I mean, guys, like I base my whole, my whole life is based on this. Like, I know people like people, people will always say that they don't like to talk about themselves, but if you give them the opportunity that you're genuinely interested in what they have to say or what they do or whatever, they will open up and share with you. Right. Like, I think that's kind of the whole premise of this thing is, yeah. Just be interested in. Totally. It's totally. And it'll come across in how you write. It'll come across in how you talk. It'll come across in business. It'll come across in personal. Like you're the same. It's important that whole like being genuine thing. Like it's, you know, to it's see a real fucking person. <laughs> right? Like just mm-hmm. and yeah. listen and be a good listener. Yeah. Be a good person. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Well, I think that, like, you've given us lots to think about. There's, you know, certainly some questions or maybe some ways that we can craft our questions better Mm -hmm. to just get better feedback from who we're working with to to just better understand if we're on the right path to, like you said, to make sure there's no disconnect there. I think that what you've shared today is going to be very helpful. uh, I look forward to seeing your... uh, rock your offers lead magnet or whatever that you talked about so it's so awesome and i'm so excited about it i just need to put i just need to get a little bit more feedback and do a couple of more tweaks um so i would love to you know give it to anybody that's interested um and if they put uh i want to rock my offer in the comments um i'll friend you and i'll send it to you uh no problem as soon as it's as soon as it's ready because it's almost ready you know how you just have to like have like the final edits and make sure things are all lined up and it makes sense. Um, yep. That's, that's the stage I'm at 
right now, but basically it'll give you all the questions you need to ask and how to go through this process step by step, super simple, not complicated. So basically at the end, you'll be like, oh, I totally know how to do this. Like I'm super excited to rock my offer now, so. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions, um, both Amy and I will be here. So if you're catching the replay, cause we're getting ready to wrap things up, please let us know that you watch the replay and yeah. share. Like, be a part of the conversation. Don't be the creeper at the at the Creative Coffee Cafe. <laughs> creative creeper at the Creative ca Coffee Cafe. Yeah, Alliteration. Kind of How's that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, look at this, um, Lacey Phillips. As it turns out, I do want to rock my offer. Fantastic. <laughs> and now you're going to have the steps to do it. Yeah, I think we all do. I think we really all want to just speak and be able to resonate with the people that we want to connect with. Um, totally. so, you know, we always have to continually repeat ourselves or find new ways of describing what we do. I think once we're using the right language, it should just, it will trans it transforms everything. Like I've seen clients go from having, you know, just a trickle of clients to having, you know, clients come in regularly. Um, they now are do more speaking. They, they didn't do speaking engagements before and now they do speaking engagements. They're like, Oh yeah, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that because what's happened is they realize they have the tools. They've had the tools to do it all along and they mm -hmm. thought it was way more complicated than it needed to be. So they're getting stuck there. So once they realized it was simple and they had this, you know, kind of mini system to go through, they were like, Oh my gosh, I, I can do this. And confidence goes through right. the roof. Right. Right. Well, thank you very much for simplifying it for us. Cause I do feel like it's something that as a business owner, we get overwhelmed by and, like I said, we get in our own space and we're too close to it. Sometimes it's hard for us to remove ourselves from it. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing You're your welcome. little there and, and joining us. I don't know if you got a chance to drink much of your coffee. Mine's, mine's gone. <laughs> I'm good. I'm almost, I'm almost down to the bottom. Almost yeah. down to the bottom. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, yeah, I think we're going to wrap things up and yep. again, just reach out to either Amy or myself if anybody has any questions and continue totally. the conversation. Um, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing everybody on the next one. Next week's Creative Coffee Cafe every Thursday. Awesome. <laughs> Bye. All right. Thanks, Amy. Bye, Thanks everybody. For having Thanks me. For Yay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.